Good morning. Great to be able to talk to you again. I've got another food for thought, something for you to think about. I'm Maurice Barrett. And I've been thinking, I've been thinking about worship this week. Let me ask you a question. Who do you worship? Don't answer too quickly. You know, Everybody worships, everyone on the planet worships, it's in our DNA, you can't not worship. The question is, who will you worship? That's the title of this vlog, who will you worship? We're made to worship, it's in our DNA. And there are only two alternatives, if we don't worship the creator, then we'll worship something created. Only two choices. Well, if you worship the Creator, that's great. But if you worship anything created, man or beast, or man of God, anything, then inadvertently you're worshipping Satan because there's only two choices. And they both need a mediator. You cannot worship God. You cannot come to God unless you go through Jesus Christ. But you cannot get to Satan except through a mediator, through an idol, through something created. You know, the Hindus have millions of gods. Reptiles, birds, fish, plants, anything. Statues. You can worship God through anything created. And it's indirectly worshipping to Satan. So let me ask you a question again. Who do you worship? Well, if you're a believer and you're saved, you'll say, well, I'm worshipping God. But are you sure? Can you prove it? This is what Jesus said to God's people who were redeemed. How be it? In vain they do worship me. It's not worship to me, it's vanity, it's worthless. Because they teach for doctrines the commandments of men. Wow, that's scary. You know, the traditions of our denominations and the doctrines of our Bible schools are stronger than the Word of God to many believers. You can tell them facts. For example, you can say that Jesus didn't die at Easter. That's a pagan feast to Astaroth. Jesus died at Passover. They won't change. The tradition's stronger than the truth. They say, yeah, but people come to church at Easter as though that's a good reason to keep a pagan feast and say Jesus died on it and rose again when it's, it's lies. It's so easy. In vain they worship me because they teach him for doctrines the commandments of men. Well, it was the same with Israel. Isaiah 29 verse 13 says this, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honour me, they've removed their heart far from me, and their fear towards me is the precept of men, is taught by the precept of men. You know, if you don't worship the real God, and you don't want to know the real God, and let me tell you, the real God is very scary. He's not what we've been portrayed. He's not a sugar daddy, happy clappy man sat in the clouds to bless you. He's a fearful, awesome God. And if you don't want that fearsome, awesome God, you'll make God in your own image. And that's what God's people have been doing for since Adam and Eve. When Israel were redeemed from Egypt, God's people who redeemed them from Egypt, and God appeared to them in Mount Sinai, they didn't want the real God. They said to Moses, he's too frightening. You speak to God, and whatever he says, we'll obey and we'll do it. But don't let God speak to us. They didn't want the real God. What's the consequence? They made God in their own image. Forty days later, they were dancing naked round a golden calf to the gods that Aaron had made and said, these are the gods that brought you out of Egypt. A golden calf. Forty days later. You see, if you don't want the real God, you'll worship a false god. You'll call him Jehovah. They said, let's have a feast to the Lord. But actually, it was a feast to Satan. Well, the ten tribes rebelled. 
after Solomon's reign, his son. And they built a golden calf in Samaria. Unbelievable. You see, they didn't want the real God. Let me take a few minutes on worship. It's a big subject and I've, I've got studies on it, but worship's nothing to do with music. I know the modern church think it is, but it's nothing to do with music. The first mention in the Bible is when Abram went to sacrifice his son. Let me read it, Genesis 22, 5. And Abram said to his young men, Abide you here with the ass. I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. You know, Job worshipped when he lost everything. Job 1, 20. He'd lost everything and he was in agony. Then Job arose, rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. See, worship's acknowledging God. It's to kiss the hand, to bow the knee. It's acknowledging God. Nothing to do with music. When you're obedient, then you're worshipping God. So time's gone, but I'll ask you again. Who? Will you worship? Think seriously. Remember, it's not your words and songs. It's your heart's desire. It's what you love. That's what you worship. If you love music, it's worship to Satan. You've got to love the one who you should worship. If you love the gifts, it's false. You should love the, love the giver of the gifts. And you can't love God if you're not obedient, if you're not obeying the instructions in the epistles of how to live the Christian life. You worship his vanity because you can't love. What did Jesus say? If you love me, keep my commandments, keep my teachings. Well, I've said enough. I hope I've provoked you today. Have a wonderful day and keep thinking.